uh, I'll talk about a story that was told to me by a Vermont farmer. This is the this is the folk tale <clears throat> uh, that I that I brought with me today. Uh, this fellow's name was Thurston Hewlett. Uh, Thurston was a, a dyed in the wool Vermont farmer, and uh, on one occasion when some of us were, were all together, we were actually cleaning pumpkins from one of the fields that uh, one of the, somebody else had cleaning them and taking them down by the roadside to sell to uh, New Yorkers and other down, down country people uh, uh, to come up when they came up in the fall. And we were, we were telling stories around the group. So we sat in, uh, in the, the Doors barn and um, Clara Hewlett says, tell, uh, tell the story about your dog, your, your, uh, your, uh, your hunting dog. And Thurston said, oh, they don't want to, they don't want to hear that story. Yes, she said, it's wonderful, it's a heartwarming story. Well, so Thurston cleared his voice and said, well, he says, I did, I had myself a dog. He says, a wonderful hound. He says, it was a great rabbit dog. He says, I could take that rabbit out anywhere. He says, open the door, let the rabbit, or let the dog out. And he'd chase the rabbit, he'd find a rabbit and chase it, and he would always bring it right back to me where I was, you know, sitting there with my rifle, shotgun. And uh, he said, I, he was just a wonderful dog. He says, I could uh, put him up in trials against any other dogs, any place. Well, he said this one day, I, I drove the dog and, and uh, we went over to, into uh, South Arlington, which to get to South Arlington, you gotta go through, God forbid, a little bit of New York State. <gasps> oh. Yes, well, nonetheless, you hold your breath for just a little while, and then, then you can open the door, and the dog jumped out and starts running up this little slope. I was busy getting my uh, gun out of, the, out of the trunk. When I looked up, I could see that dog running up the hill, and I could see that somebody had been mowing that hill uh, with, a, with a scythe. And he'd gone to lunch or done something foolish, and he laid that scythe down in the grass so that the, so that the blade of the scythe, now I'm talking now about that thing that, that uh, old man time carries with him and death carries with him, you know, it's a scythe like that. Sharp, ooh, gosh, the blade was sharp. And that little dog of mine, I hate to think of it, he says. A dog of mine was running straight for that blade. He says he didn't, wasn't looking up, of course. He wasn't looking up because he had his nose to the ground. And before I could think of anything, that dog, he hit that blade, that blade split that dog right smack in half from the tip of his nose to the end of his tail. It was terrible to behold. Oh God, he says, without thinking more, I ran up the hill. I took those two halves of that dog. I slapped them together, ran back down to the car, wrapped my jacket around him, drove back home. He says, I soaked that jacket in turpentine the way my granddaddy had taught me to do. I put them next to the, next to the stove in the kitchen to keep warm. I just went from day to day to see how he was doing. I'd come down in the morning and give a little bump with my toe on that box. It would give a little wiggle, my jacket. I knew he'd made it through the night. And then three or four days later, I didn't even, when I came down, I didn't even need to touch the box with my toe because that little bundle was wiggling all and just moving along. That dog was eager to get out of my jacket. So I pulled the box out into the center of the room and I opened up my jacket. And that little tyke, he just jumped out of there. He was so happy to see me. He was running around the kitchen floor, you know, and, but oh my God, I'd done a terrible thing. Yeah, well, that's I did. I, when I picked up the two halves of that dog, I slapped the front end of one to the back end of the other. Never thought of it, never dreamed about it. Oh my God, he says, there he was running around the table, running around the kitchen, and he was, uh, he just had his nose at both ends of the, of the, of the tail and the, and the tail at both ends of the nose. It was terrible to behold. But he says, you know, I got, so I took that dog out, took that dog out um, over there to West, uh, South Arlington sometimes, and he was twice the dog he'd been before, <clears throat> because now he was the only dog I'd ever known in the history of dogdom that could bark at both ends. And that's Thurston Hewlett's story, 
called the split dog. It's known by people all, in, that's one of the folk tales that's known by almost everybody, Adirondacks people, Green Mountain people, <clears throat> people in West Virginia down there in the Carolinas. That's a, that's a wonderful story that probably came over from Ireland or Scotland or <clears throat> England with our, with our ancestors.